Hi everyone, this is Amit Kumar. I'm glad to welcome you to this webinar on Salesforce uh, Winter 21 release. So as some of you would have been just coming out of that release this weekend, uh, we are kind of a little bit late in terms of uh, holding this webinar. We did want to hold it before, before the release happened, but uh, nonetheless, here we are. Uh, we want to talk about how um, like uh, opkey can be used for future releases and uh, we'll talk about uh, what were the key things in this uh, in this release which just happened uh, and uh, that might help you to plan for the next uh, next releases from salesforce and uh, use an opkey based approach for them uh, so some uh, ground rules first like any other webinar We'll have, sorry, I think the sequence is different. So let me talk about the agenda first. So we'll talk about what's new in winter 21 and how does uh, this impact uh, te test automation, uh, given that uh, what, what was released and this can give you a good idea of uh, future releases, how you can use our approach. Um, how how did we support, uh, uh, or rather how, how Opki supports uh, 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 releases from Salesforce, uh, which we'll show through a demo as well, followed with a uh, set of question and answers. Moving forward. So today I'll have Param. Uh, he is a project manager running uh, multiple engagements for uh, Opki team and uh, he will be taking through most of these presentations and uh, i'll be helping param uh, in this uh, webinar today <clears throat> yeah i was talking about the housekeeping rules so like any other webinar um, the attendees uh, are muted and uh, but at the same time Feel free to keep on sending questions and to keep it interactive as uh, Param is talking about uh, uh, these various things on Salesforce. Uh, the session is also being recorded and uh, in case you miss any part of it uh, or you want to share with any of your colleagues uh, that uh, this thing will be sent, uh, a link will be sent to all the attendees uh, as well as uh, we have a option to download the brochure of this service offering and uh, that will let you know uh, as as we come to the end, end of this uh, webinar today where, where you can download it from. So let's uh, move to the, the crux of uh, today's discussion. So I'll hand it over to Param from here and uh, he will take you through the slides and, and then the demo. Over to you, Param. Thank you, Amit. Hi, uh, good morning and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, so in uh, today's uh, webinar, uh, we'll be covering uh, the basic uh, new features coming up uh, in the winter 21. And I'm excited to show you the latest and uh, great feature of Opki, uh, which will uh, give you an oversight to how Opki is actually helping in uh, winter 21 uh, release uh, with respect to the overall uh, validation of your ops. And we will also talk about uh, what are those uh, key uh, areas within uh, winter 21, uh, which uh, might have uh, impacted your uh, uh, testing services. So uh, today I will be also talking about uh, some of the of key features, which we will think uh, how we can reduce the overall uh, testing cycle uh, using of uh, cutting edge features. So with this, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to go over uh, a few of uh, the Salesforce uh, new features, which are pretty excited. So the first one is uh, Lightning uh, App Builder. So many of uh, our administrator and the developers might have uh, already seen. Uh, so now we have uh, dynamic forms, which allows you to create uh, mini page layouts uh, that can be placed anywhere using the Lightning App Builder. 
So this uh, dynamic forms is the next step in evolution of uh, lightning record pages. So uh, right now uh, we have this uh, dynamic form uh, in the release uh, winter 21 uh, release version. So though uh, this was also there in uh, summer 20 uh, release, uh, but now uh, this is as a full fledged uh, package uh, within winter 21. So uh, this dynamic form also adds the ability to configure record in data fields and the section inside the lightning app builders. So we can see here uh, the before and after. So now we have all these fields uh, which are directly showing up uh, within the Salesforce uh, uh, layout. So few of the uh, benefit which uh, I think our developer may get out of uh, the dynamic forms is uh, these dynamic forms are single assignment model for the lightning page instead of a dual model of assigning a lightning page and a page layout and even uh, uh, for the dynamic layouts uh, these provide the visibility room to show and hide field and the sections on the page uh, this also gives the better performance uh, overall performance uh, for our salesforce so by putting the field and the section in according to the component or the tab uh, significantly improve the page load uh, timeout. So sometimes uh, we might have also seen these uh, pages uh, take a little more time in uh, loading. So with this uh, dynamic forms, uh, the performance is a bit improvement uh, from the Salesforce side. Uh, with the dynamic form uh, managing uh, the field and the section on the page in the Lightning App Builder. Uh, without touching the page uh, layout editor. So uh, this is about the dynamic uh, forms and uh, we might have uh, also seen uh, dynamic actions, which is the recent add on uh, to the uh, winter 21. Uh, of. So uh, while uh, dynamic forms or dynamic pages might seem uh, to be the star of the show, but uh, dynamic actions are also said to be an extremely powerful new features that uh, our Salesforce admin or developer should explore now. So this dynamic action allow us to choose uh, which actions uh, appears in the highlighted panels on the objects record page. So we can now control the visibility of each action based on the factor uh, which we specify. Our dynamic actions uh, will also enable uh, you to create the uncluttered and responsive pages uh, that displays only the actions your users need to see based on the specified criteria. As we can uh, see on the screen, so user can now specify the criteria. So based on this uh, criteria, uh, user will be able to see the actions uh, on the layout. So instead of uh, scanning and uh, endless list of actions, uh, now user will be presented uh, with the simple choice of uh, relevant to their roles, uh, profiles, or when the record meets a certain criteria. Uh, with these actions, uh, now these are available, and uh, uh, when they are, uh, these are appeared, uh, this will be configured in the Lightning App Builder instead of the traditional uh, page layout uh, editor. So this uh, actually reduced uh, overall administrative uh, time and the effort. So I'm assuming uh, most of our uh, folks are also trying the dynamic actions and the dynamic uh, forms or pages uh, using the Lightning app better. Uh, the next exciting feature which uh, Salesforce uh, bring up in the winter 21 release is uh, in-app guidance. So the in-app guidance uh, help user along as uh, they create, edit, or clone the records, including uh, dialogues and uh, with the in-app uh, guidance. So uh, as we know, uh, developers know this uh, will be, uh, this change will be applied to the Lightning experience in the essential uh, group, uh, professional, enterprise, unlimited, and uh, developer editions. So now you can also make your in-app guidance uh, contrast or the components of your org team. You can also change the color templates and the branding. And also you can uh, choose from a 
you know, different uh, color palettes uh, based on your organization's teams to see how the Salesforce uh, make your in-app guidance uh, work. Also, there is a new feature in the in-app guidance uh, that is uh, share a direct link to the in-app guidance. So with this feature, now you can send user and the collaborator a direct link to promote and uh, walk through. So sometime uh, we might have uh, seen uh, the people who are often afraid to click, uh, uh, you know, the fields or the links on the UI, which they are not uh, very familiar with because uh, they don't know, you know, what uh, will break in the system. So now with this uh, uh, in-app guidance feature, so uh, user uh, will get the complete detail uh, of what this uh, feature is. They'll get the complete uh, walkthrough of uh, the feature. So now uh, having the ability to prompt user to take the certain actions or to inform them about the particular system functionality and the customization, uh, a user can use the in-app guidance feature also. So effectively, if we say um, for developers and administrator, this will give an empower or the drive to adoption uh, for the end user uh, in each and every uh, you know layout of the screen. Uh, then uh, we will move on to the next feature, which is uh, a kind of a collaborative uh, uh, app which is being built uh, within the Salesforce, though we have a, a Salesforce CRM, uh, but now Salesforce Anywhere is the future experience uh, for CRM, we can say. So this uh, Salesforce Anywhere app effectively uh, help the Salesforce user to work together in real time. So this will help to make uh, decision faster. Uh, user uh, will also get uh, the alerts about the changes in your Salesforce data, uh, which you are more concerned about. Uh, Salesforce Anywhere app will also update your Salesforce data in just a few taps uh, uh, with the suggested actions. So this will also help you in uh, collaborate uh, in context with the chats, uh, videos, and voice. You will also get the feature to search and view your uh, Salesforce data uh, within the Salesforce Anywhere app. So now uh, this uh, Salesforce Anywhere app uh, is seems to be a kind of a game changer for the people who are working at the field level uh, because now user no longer have to chase down uh, you know any specific deal updates or trying to digest the data which is being uh, there in the in the uh, you know system. So Anywhere can access uh, this Salesforce app on the devices. So this is actually surface a pipeline update in the real time as a real progress. Uh, talking about uh, different, uh, you know, supporting platforms uh, for Salesforce, uh, so we all know uh, support for IE11 on the uh, desktop and the browser is uh, kind of uh, deprecated. Uh, in 2017, uh, but with the extended uh, support for IE11, user will be able to uh, use a Salesforce uh, app on the uh, desktop. Uh, with respect to the support on the on the mobile platform uh, for uh, Android and iOS, uh, Salesforce do support uh, uh, Google Chrome on uh, iPad, uh, and on the Android side, uh, we have the support for uh, Chrome browser. So now uh, coming on to the actual uh, part of this uh, webinar, which is uh, how this overall winter 20 update will impact your automation test scripts. Uh, there are uh, many changes which, uh, you know, uh, is uh, there in the winter 20 release with respect to the overall DOM structure, uh, the APIs got changed. So we have uh, listed out a few of these, uh, you know, critical changes which we think uh, we as a user or the QA uh, should be aware of. And we will also talk about uh, how uh, teams who are still using the Selenium-based uh, 
tools or frameworks uh, uh, will face the challenge uh, with the you know uh, ongoing uh, Salesforce uh, updates. So the first update uh, which we see here is uh, the tome change uh, for the anchor and the daytime field. So uh, this tome change uh, will impact most of the uh, test scripts which are built using Selenium. Uh, then we have change on the quick action side. Uh, so earlier with the quick action, there is no uh, up, uh, you know update happen on the on the URL uh, when we activate any quick action menu. But now if you have written any test scripts uh, which uh, perform any action on the quick quick action menu. So uh, and you are doing some validation around it. So you might have to update your test scripts uh, because uh, the underlying URL gets changed once uh, this quick action menu gets activated. So now uh, moving on to the next uh, update, which is a label change for the field in FSL objects. So again, now with the winter 21 release, uh, the state field in the service appointment object has been renamed to the state and uh, prominence. Uh, this address field is the work order and uh, work order line item object has been renamed to the street. So uh, at any case, if uh, you are using any APIs or the locators with respect to this specific uh, text, so and uh, you are using Selenium based framework, so you need to update your test scripts uh, for this change from the Salesforce side. Another update uh, we have is uh, for the SLDCS change and the generic DOM change uh, for the standard pages. So uh, as uh, we just uh, see, like uh, there are several updates uh, coming up from the Salesforce side because of uh, so many new features. Uh, on the Salesforce uh, platform itself. So the style and the DOM element uh, for the standard uh, pages is also getting changed. But uh, uh, the teams or the customers who are using uh, Opkey, uh, so the overall maintenance for such uh, changes has been automatically uh, made compatible with the latest uh, plugins and the recorder from the Opkey side. Uh, with respect to the uh, some of uh, other changes, uh, we have uh, the error message, which earlier shows up on the lookup field, also gets updated. So now any test uh, which you have uh, written so far to do the validation of the error messages along the lookup field line, so you need to update those uh, test scripts. So as uh, we just uh, discussed, like if you are using Selenium based test scripts, so uh, we need to update uh, these uh, test scripts or your entire regression pack uh, for these impacted uh, areas. And this is not uh, just about the winter 21 release. Uh, you know, Salesforce keep on updating their platform. So uh, we might have to, uh, you know, face this challenge with every new release uh, from the Salesforce side. But as a Salesforce constant, uh, consultant, uh, we have been working closely in al analyzing the Salesforce update in order to ensure that your regression test uh, remains stable even after the new Salesforce features are added with the major releases. Uh, so now uh, let's see. Uh, how Opti take care of uh, uh, you know uh, this update from the Salesforce uh, Winter 21 release side. So looking at the first change, uh, which is on the date uh, DOM changes for the anchor and date time. So this feature is already uh, updated and being handled uh, within the Opti uh, test builder and the plugin side. And uh, user do not have to make any changes in their test scripts. So all the users who are using Opti to build their entire regression pack uh, you know, uh, do not uh, have to worry because all their regression pack uh, will be automatically healed uh, with the latest uh, update from the Opti side. Uh, for the change on the URL change uh, on the quick action menu, 
again this feature uh, or the update from the Salesforce side is being uh, automatically handled uh, within the Opkit test builder and the plugin side. Uh, for the label change on the FSL object. So we have already accommodated uh, this new change in the object test builder and the plugin. That's the uh, DS change on the DOM site uh, for the standard pages. Uh, this again uh, is being handled in the test builder and the plugin site. Uh, the only change uh, which we need to uh, make in our regression our test script uh, even for the Opki users is uh, if we are doing some validation around the error messages. So we just need to, uh, you know, uh, update our test script uh, so that uh, this new error message uh, will be validated. So that's the only change uh, which uh, the Opki, uh, Opki user has to make uh, in their test script. So while talking about the uh, update from the Salesforce side. Uh, let's look at a quick glance on you know how Opkey ensure uh, that its underlying uh, builder and the recorder uh, plugins are always up to date uh, within the stipulated uh, timeline uh, provided by Salesforce uh, for the preview period. So Opkey uh, SFDC specific test builder is also updated uh, for Windows 21 release. That means uh, now user can use of the Salesforce specific test builder uh, to record their uh, user actions or to add the validations uh, for the new test scripting which they'll be doing. And this is across layout field uh, and you know any changes on the DOM side. Uh, then uh, for the winter 21 release of the Salesforce uh, plugin is also updated now. So this also handle the all the changes uh, at the ORA level. Uh, then uh, for the impact analysis, which is one of the key feature available in Opkey platform. So the impact analysis feature is also certified uh, for winter 21 release. And then now uh, Opkey's uh, self-healing uh, feature is also certified for winter 21 release. So we'll, uh, you know, shortly talk about uh, impact analysis and self-healing feature, which is a, a key uh, feature in Opkey. And uh, most of our users are uh, pretty much liking this feature uh, because this help in reducing the overall validation time for the end user to quickly uh, gauge what are the impacts in the in their org. And uh, the overall uh, self healing uh, will assist in uh, doing a quick maintenance of the test scripts. So we'll uh, shortly look at uh, one of the demo which we have prepared for the users. Uh, with every Salesforce release and uh, the major Opki releases, uh, Opki create uh, the complete validation package, which uh, you know take up all the worries of the end user to ensure uh, their org will also remains in the validated state ensure uh, you know instead of uh, spending too much time uh, on maintaining the test script with the ongoing salesforce update so all the all the plugin recorder uh, test builder will be updated uh, from the opki side and user do not have to worry about uh, you know maintaining those test scripts <laughs> So uh, let's see uh, the strategy which uh, we are uh, following uh, for our customer uh, to ensure their regression pack is uh, up to date. So after every update from the Salesforce side, uh, Opkey has this feature uh, called impact analysis. Once this uh, feature is triggered, so uh, Opkey will automatically analyze the customer's org and this impact uh, is across uh, different vertical, whether it is layout, uh, you know, the configuration changes or the code level changes. So it uh, get the impact across the platform. So once uh, this impact is done, uh, user will also get uh, the update, you know, how many test scripts are impacted because of uh, this change on the Salesforce side. And uh, user can take uh, a concise decision uh, whether user want to do uh, 
quick self healing of the test scripts and this uh, self healing will automatically maintain uh, the test script for user that means all the changes which are coming up uh, from the salesforce side uh, which has already been taken here uh, within the salesforce preview period by opkey uh, so all these uh, changes so will be automatically you know uh, start healing the test script uh, for the end user and uh, once the self healing is done so uh, the org of the uh, customer will be updated with the latest uh, you know test uh, which is compatible for the uh, latest salesforce org and uh, one of the other feature uh, which uh, you know customer like is uh, the test script which user has to write uh, within the uh, op key is uh, singular for both the classic and uh, lightning version that means uh, user do not have to maintain two different test script uh, one for lightning or one for classic so within uh, using the single test script uh, user will be able to test uh, both the auras uh, of the salesforce org so with this uh, let me just uh, give a quick overview of uh, the impact analysis and the self healing in real time uh, how this works so for this uh, i will pull up my one of my screen give me a second so now uh, on the UI, uh, we can see here, uh, we can uh, see the Opkey Accelerator uh, Search Platform uh, Dashboard. So this uh, dashboard gives an overview of uh, the entire you know, coverage of uh, customers all that include uh, uh, test analysis, uh, result, uh, release status, test cycle, uh, what are those impacted uh, areas uh, from the impact analysis section and the risk assessment so let's see how user can uh, typically create a business process in opki and then i uh, will also talk about how user will uh, do the impact analysis so uh, first of all we'll create a business process and the ui of opki is uh, pretty intuitive so we can see this is a simple drag and drop so within uh, opki's uh, uh, bpmn interface user can uh, integrate uh, multiple uh, type of uh, technologies so right now uh, we are showing uh, how user can integrate uh, salesforce specific test and the oracle specific test uh, within the single test script So right now we are just adding uh, the components in this test script and these components once added uh, will create uh, the entire uh, you know workflow for the for the user so user just have to right click and uh, associate uh, the pre-built components so for all the cloud erps uh, of the uh, you know have the entire coverage so now we can see here we are moving on to the uh, test case section so here we will see uh, we already have a entire workflow which consists of uh, creating a, a lead starting from the scratch so once uh, this workflow is done so user can uh, enter the test data so this test data is uh, simply a you know a spreadsheet kind of format where user can enter the complete details whatever user want to populate uh, within the test script so after entering all these details uh, in case if user want to repeat the same test uh, with a multiple set of data user can add uh, additional uh, record set and once all this data is uh, Done. So this test script is uh, ready for execution. As uh, I mentioned, uh, you can integrate uh, multiple 
technology type within a single uh, business process. So now uh, we can see here, uh, so this uh, workflow is ready. So with the new uh, update from the Salesforce side, user just have to click on this uh, highlight impacted components. Uh, so this uh, highlight impacted component will automatically highlight those uh, those components which gets impacted uh, because of some change uh, from the Salesforce side. And what are those changes? We can see in the impacted uh, information. So we just uh, made an intentional change here, like added a new field, custom address. So we can see on the right side, this is actually showing a custom address was not added uh, in the org before we created the test kit. But after uh, you know, uh, we did added this field. So once this is uh, you know this analysis is done by Opti, so we can click on the cell filling. That means this this new field is automatically added in the component. So let's see, you know, uh, we are just opening this component and we can see here this new field custom address is automatically added because uh, Opki uh, identified this element as a new element uh, on the UI. So now, uh, from the uh, snapshot section, uh, user can take a new snapshot of the Salesforce org. Uh, that means uh, user can capture all the details uh, from the org, uh, which includes uh, all the fields, triggers, and layout uh, specific information. User can select the objects, respective objects, or user can also consider all the objects uh, from that org to take the snapshot. So right now we are taking uh, account as a object uh, to capture the snapshot. So within this, uh, we will see the impacted areas. That means uh, for the account object, uh, we have made almost five different changes on the layout. And uh, for the object uh, assets, we, will see, we can see here there are almost the uh, seven changes in the asset uh, object. And these changes are across uh, different transactional level changes, code level changes, or the configuration level changes. So you can see that all the changes are automatically highlighted by Opti. Now user can simply click on the cell field to update the underlying components. Or uh, just to analyze uh, what is the impact, user can also see the impact uh, from the dependency map. So this dependency map will give an overview of uh, you know, where uh, this element is being used and uh, what are those areas which got impacted uh, because of the change in this new field. So we can see in this dependency map, uh, this is uh, clearly showing if there is any layout uh, field level or apex class level, apex trigger level, validation uh, rule level, field flow report, or you know email template or dashboard level changes happened uh, because of this change in the in the element. So here we can see account classification is one of the apex class which got updated, and uh, respective uh, there are a few more classes which got impacted because of the change in this uh, class. So now uh, another type of change uh, which we can see is uh, the code level change. Uh, so here uh, by clicking on this button, we can see uh, Opki is also highlighting uh, all these code changes in the green color. And it is uh, clearly seen, uh, you know, uh, this green color A name is now changed to account name or something uh, like that. So this is a pretty decent uh, impact analysis, which uh, will uh, give you know uh, overview to administrator, developers, and the QAs to see the impact on the on the configuration, the code, or any field level or layout level changes in the org. And it also shows uh, the complete color coding, uh, what all triggers are added or removed. Uh, with respect to the uh, 
test case impacted uh, of key also uh, highlight or uh, with respect to uh, you know change in the test script what all uh, test cases uh, got impacted uh, just give me one second and this uh, test cases uh, will help user to do a risk based testing that means all these test scripts uh, which uh, gets impacted because of changing the object trigger or the layouts will automatically show up and user can uh, create a job uh, with uh, all these uh, test scripts and run it uh, on the uh, salesforce org so moving on to the uh, some of the new features which are coming along uh, from the opki side is uh, the platform which enables a user to give a complete hands on on writing the pure code so this is an another platform uh, which is uh, newly developed from the opki side uh, you know built on top of uh, the pure uh, standalone platform uh, so user can run this platform in the offline mode also so uh, this is called as opki e uh, user can uh, create the project uh, maintain all the test scripts in the offline mode and there is an option uh, where user can uh, also write uh, the complete java code uh, within this platform so all the salesforce developer can leverage this platform to write the unit level cases also uh, as this uh, platform is uh, purely on top of uh, uh, the ide uh, while uh, working in the offline mode, user will also get the option to upload all the artifacts uh, in in the real time uh, opki SaaS or uh, this also empowered user uh, to write the advanced Java code uh, as this is the pure uh, you know Eclipse based IDE. So all the libraries uh, which are imported uh, as an external source uh, will also be. Uh, updated uh, directly within the uh, opki uh, saas platform so the, the, there is a you know close integration uh, between uh, opki e and opki saas platform which is uh, you know one of the uh, greatest uh, feature available uh, where user can also work in offline online mode so user can also create their own java files user can also add package uh, or write the Java code uh, for your uh, specific uh, application. Uh, with respect to Salesforce, uh, we do have the complete, uh, uh, you know, set of methods available, which user can leverage to write any type of, uh, you know, uh, test scripts uh, for the Salesforce uh, application. Uh, for uh, some of the composite, uh, you know, complex uh, field type, uh, we already have method where a user can write the uh, method uh, for uh, one type of aura, which is say classic, and the same uh, script, you know, which is written within Opti will seamlessly run on the Lightning version also. So user can use uh, uh, this Opti E platform uh, to write, uh, you know, any type of uh, test script, whether it is uh, regression test scripts or uh, unit test scripts. Uh, to test your uh, Salesforce specific uh, application. So a uh, few key ways. Uh, so we uh, have already seen uh, with help of uh, of key Salesforce specific solutions, uh, which includes uh, faster creation of the test scripts. So uh, many of our customer are able to, uh, you know, complete their uh, regression pack uh, with almost 60% uh, of uh, ROI. So uh, with the impact analysis feature, uh, so user will be able to, you know, gauge the complete impact uh, on, on the code level, on the uh, field level, or the configuration level, uh, at least uh, three times faster than the normal way of, uh, you know, analyzing those changes uh, in the Salesforce org. 
uh, with the self healing feature uh, it is uh, almost 70% uh, faster to quickly uh, update the test script as uh, we have already seen in the video uh, that the test script uh, with a single click uh, gets automatically healed and uh, the lit latest changes which are in the salesforce or whether that is configuration uh, side changes or the code side changes is automatically handled uh, within the test scripts whether it is new addition of uh, field on the ui or uh, any field which got removed from the ui everything will be automatically sensed and healed by using the opti self healing it so with this uh, i just wanted to uh, you know, uh, give rest to my words and uh, wanted to uh, take any questions if we have. Uh, so we can open this session for question and answer. So thanks, over Param. to you. So, yeah, thank you for, and uh, we did run into some issues, but uh, I guess we are here now. So questions, uh, let me see what questions we have. Uh, Okay, so the first question is uh, uh, the self heal pro uh, self healing what you showed, right? So can you expand a little bit more uh, in terms of uh, like when I'm doing a, a release, I'm the technical team at uh, my company. So how how does uh, that work, and how will it help me do it differently than what I'm doing today? Param, you got the question? Sure. Yep. So as we understand, uh, you know, uh, with every update from the Salesforce side or even uh, for the internal releases, so the main uh, challenge every uh, every time we get says, uh, you know, how we'll uh, get the impacted areas. So we have uh, just seen uh, with the help of uh, Opkey's impact analysis, uh, user will get the complete list of impacted areas. Uh, then uh, comes the self healing part. So uh, for developers, uh, self heal uh, feature uh, will assist in uh, gauging the impact on uh, say trigger classes or even the apex code level. And all the unit tests uh, which user has written uh, and this user tests are mainly uh, you know UI level tests. So user will uh, you know get the leverage of uh, self healing feature uh, where the new uh, fields which user added on the layout uh, will get automatically added at the component level and there is no additional uh, code developers or the uh, automation engineer has to write to accommodate uh, these new changes otherwise if we talk about the traditional way so uh, for any new requirement, any new changes in the existing requirement, uh, user has to uh, add those new fields in the underlying components or the underlying methods uh, to make it work. But with Opki's self-healing feature, it's uh, seamless uh, for the end user. With a single click, all the libraries uh, will automatically get updated. So I hope uh, that answered uh, your question. Okay. All right. So next question uh, is in terms of creation of the test scripts. So I guess you mentioned in the presentation that uh, it is 70% faster. So uh, how, uh, like, what is your experience and uh, what are you comparing against when you're saying 70% sure. faster? Sure. So typically. Uh, the way uh, we write the test scripts uh, with any of the framework, whether it is open source or any commercial uh, tool. So the traditional approach is, uh, you know, uh, either use a test builder or manually create the test script by the keyword driven approach or, uh, you know, using the recording. Uh, so Opki has a uh, enhanced feature while working uh, along the Salesforce uh, platform. Uh, so Opki has a, uh, you know the entire coverage of the metadata APIs to understand the uh, org and uh, you know quickly create the autonomous business components with a single click. So now on the one side where 
user is uh, writing the methods and take days to create uh, you know the automation uh, suite for say 10 different objects uh, with opkey with the single click all these components will get uh, created uh, within a minute time so we can clearly see the you know uh, difference uh, we are uh, on the traditional approach it take days uh, or with the off key it is uh, gets created with a single click in a minute time so now uh, user just have to use those use those autonomous business components to build the test script and user uh, can run uh, the those test scripts uh, within the single day so it's clearly a you know a value add for the end user uh, who want to quickly uh, build the regression pack around their uh, salesforce uh, application and uh, the user who has a big backlog of the test scripts and want to start uh, pretty quickly in in uh, the test automation cycle so i must say you know user uh, can try opkey's uh, quick autonomous business component feature to see the clear uh, you know uh, difference in how fast opkey will create the test script for end user okay thanks the next question is uh, in while doing impact analysis can opkey also do impact analysis of the salesforce triggers yes so uh, during the uh, demonstration now we show uh, opkey uh, will be able to get the comparison on the trigger level and also the apex pluses level uh, which help user to uh, you know uh, do the analysis whether those changes uh, done at the trigger level or the apex classes level are legitimate changes or those are in uh, you know unintentional changes so uh, yes opki uh, is able to uh, perform the uh, analysis uh, around the triggers okay so i don't have any further questions uh, so with that i guess we will uh, uh, like to thank all the participants uh, uh, from various organizations so i would like to encourage you to download the brochure once again from the handout section uh, and also to email us uh, with uh, your availability when when you you are available for a discussion on the challenges you may have faced more uh, because we may not have covered everything here so we would like to get in a dialogue with you and understand better and create solutions uh, around your issues and uh, to address your issues um, so we look forward to hearing from you uh, and with that we will end today's webinar thank you very much everyone and have a great uh, day great evening great uh, day uh, depending on the time zones you are in thank you again and thanks param for a great webinar thanks everyone for joining and have a great day bye bye